Hey guys, welcome back to the Multidimensional Journey podcast and welcome back to the Multidimensional Journey YouTube channel. This is your host, Ayahuasca Carr. Thank you so much for returning back. If you like this podcast that we're going to get into today, would really appreciate it if you left a review for the podcast. And then for our video today, if you like it, hit that like button, subscribe. It would really help me out. I drop videos Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays of every week. If you sign up for my newsletter, you kind of get a sneak peek before I drop everything. So we'd really, really appreciate that. And also, if you're interested in helping the ayahuasca vine conserve and continue to thrive, it would be awesome if you click the link below and adopt a vine. Right now, with the globalization of ayahuasca, it is being consumed at a very rapid rate. And ayahuasca needs our help. She needs our help to continue to grow and thrive. So it's just a simple link. You click on it. It's a $5 donation. And for every $5, they, they plant a new ayahuasca vine. So please, it would be really awesome if you could help out with that. So let's get into post ayahuasca journey and what we can do immediately afterwards to really nourish ourselves, slow down and get the most out of integration. <clears throat> if you think about it, you know, you, you're either preparing for a journey or you've just come out of one, or maybe you've been integrating something for a really long time. Either way, you've invested heavily into your own healing and transformation. Ayahuasca is not an easy path. It is very challenging, actually. So we really want to put enough or we want to put the same effort that we've put pre ayahuasca right with all the preparation we really want to put that in the integration as well it's really really key and important to your transformation and so many things to come so first and foremost what i really like to talk about and i really encourage myself the students i work with and throughout my educational videos is capturing those insights as soon as possible and i really like to suggest either uh, writing those insights down that you've received in ceremony where there was an insight about your healing, who you truly are, things that might be you know, getting in the way, past memories. We want to capture those through writing. Or what can also serve you really well and brings in more elements of voice and, and video because you can actually see your facial structure, the way the tone of your voice has maybe changed after ceremony. That's happened to me many, many times where you know I'm kind of unrecognizable. I feel like um, a total rebirth has happened. And as you know, as we've talked about on the channel, the afterglow phase, two to three, two to three weeks after the ayahuasca journey, sometimes up to two to three months, things start to fade naturally, organically, and it's very much a part of the process. So when we have voice recordings or when we have videos to kind of go back on in our diary and our timeline, it can be really empowering to be like, wow, I really did feel that. I really did you know, have those incredible and deep insights. Um, I, I'm a warrior. I just sat in three nights of ceremony, really remembering um, and recalling those. And through voice recording and video recording and journaling throughout your timeline can be really, really helpful. And if you plan on being a long-term practi practitioner of ayahuasca, you are probably going to accumulate lots of experiences. And it's really hard to remember all of them because a lot will be happening in between ceremonies and in your integration. Ayahuasca is a whole um, plant medicine path, so to speak. It is a tool for healing, for transformation, for insights, for transitions, for preparing for a lot of things in the human continuum and the soul continuum. So, you know, like I said, if you plan on practicing this for a while, it's really good to capture these things right away. So post ayahuasca journey, moving on to the next item, we really do want to take time to slow to slow down hopefully post ayahuasca journey you have a free calendar you know a couple of days up to a week more is better in my eyes um, but i understand we all have really busy lives we might be parents we might be co-workers we have an entire human life outside of our own healing journey right but the more we can slow down you know and not necessarily rush back into work or relationships or things that are you know potentially um, mirroring you know our past selves and not so much supporting the parts that we're trying to integrate. Solitude is really, really nourishing during this time. And we'll get to this later, but being selective of the energies that we're putting ourselves in front of during this very um, sensitive time, you know, two to three weeks after our ayahuasca journey. So really taking the time to just nourish your body, drink lots of water, eat lots of good food, get out into nature, you know, being really intentional and slowing down. It's a very deep somatic process and it really allows us to continue that mindfulness that ayahuasca naturally cultivates in the ceremony. You know, the, the way that ayahuasca works in other plant medicines and psychedelics, this has actually been shown, you know, through research and science 
that the mindfulness or ability to be in our parasympathetic nervous system, to be this, this experience of being fully dropped in to our bodies and seeing the world through a childlike mind, just totally interested and like captivated by everything, we really want to continue to nourish that. So like I said, spending time in nature, and just really slowing down, this will really, really serve us well. We want to avoid overstimulation. So a part of the dieta is often like staying away from overstimulating movies, music, anything audio or visual, essentially not rushing back into watching any like really dramatic or horror related um, items because you and me, we are so open and sensitive and we really don't want to like the seeds of wisdom that have been planted. We really want to incubate them. We really want to give them the space and the time and we want to water those seeds you know, through our intentions, our post-integration intention, intentions and all of that. So they really have a chance to bud. So they have a really a chance to grow and flourish because, you know, I myself have made this mistake and other people I've worked with um, just rushing back into everything and then everything kind of gets jumbled up and it's like, man, I don't, I don't even remember what, what I did in that ceremony. So remembering that you have invested and this is a really big deal. So give yourself the grace and the space that you deserve. So at some point, you know, in the integration journey, not right away, you know, you really want to slow down and take your time, but at some point, whenever it feels right to you, starting to set some intentions for post-integration. What do we want to manifest with what we've been shown? You know, for example, in my last journey that I had in April, which was just so wonderful, I healed so much. If you guys have been watching me on my YouTube channel, I had a very chaotic experience in the jungles of Peru two years ago. I also had amazing experiences too, by the way, but I had an experience that left me very, very vulnerable and just left me in a place that I had never been in. And April of this year, I had an incredible experience. I feel like I finally like came back home from the jungle. All of me was finally here and I still feel that way. And I've just been floating in this absolute um, contentment, like just super content and at peace. And the way I've intentionally integrated that is saying no to things that I just know aren't in alignment, but maybe, you know, maybe I would have chosen them or said yes to them out of fear in the past, or just not really slowing down to think and feel into what I really desire. So those have been some of my continued post-integration goals is to continue to stay in alignment with what feels good to me. And when I get distracted or I'm getting pulled into old energies to really sit with myself and to sit with that part that feels like it needs to make a decision out of fear and to be like, Hey, you know what? It's okay we can make empowered decisions that feel good for us. And using all the skills that I talk about on this channel, like mindfulness, breath work, reparenting, EMDR, somatic experiencing, you know, all the, all the beautiful things. So for you, it might look different, right? Um, you might have a list of things that you want to integrate. You might have a theme. It might be very like, I want, I want to really cultivate this, this self love that I came into contact with and I've never came into contact with. Um, I want to continue to go deeper with some of the memories that were shown in ceremony. <clears throat> Oftentimes, memories are revealed in ceremony and not always fully completed mentally, emotionally, uh, somatically. You know, sometimes it takes some EMDR work, some, you know, some internal family systems, uh, breath work to continue to release and discharge what was come up, all of these different things. So just kind of really making that, that personal plan for yourself and, um, giving yourself like tons of nourishment and grace in the process because this path is wild to say the least and any human on this earth that is um striving for more consciousness you know to heal themselves to be a better human really just deserves the utmost recognition so i see you you're doing an incredible job and that's pretty much it for today's podcast and video i hope you enjoyed it i hope it's inspired you to take some nourishing um steps some action taking steps towards your immediate uh, post ayahuasca journey. And if you are interested in working with me one-on-one -on -one, or you want to come to the breathwork circles, I also do a monthly um, plant medicine, psychedelic non-ordinary states of consciousness group every month for preparation and integration. And all of all of the other things, you know, you can check out all my work below. And if you like this podcast, would love it if you left a review. And if you liked this video, be sure to give it a like. And if you would like, please subscribe so you don't miss the videos I drop Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. Thank you guys so much for being here. I'll see you next time.